Okay, everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Project Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. We are the 29th of November 2022. Today, around the table, we have Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemeur, Mark Waite, who seems really motivated to take notes today, <laughs> Stéphane Merle, and Bruno Verarten. Thanks, Mark, for already updating the notes. Um, let's get started with announcements. So the weekly 2.380 of Jenkins Core is out, or almost. At least the war packages and Docker images have been built. The Docker Im images was built five minutes ago. So that's really fresh news. Uh, as written by Mark, thanks for that. Changelog is merged, but there are corrections. Uh, Kevin is out today, so that might have to wait until tomorrow. Um, other information on that weekly? Nope. No, uh, no. Well, lots of changes in the weekly, and they're noted in the change log. Okay. A special thanks for Hervé to double check that the infamous plugin pipeline utility steps was installed again on release CI before the weekly release started. Otherwise, it would have been broken because we, we missed some usages of the keyword provided by, by, by this pipeline when we tried to remove it a few weeks ago. So there are work under. Uh, some people should try to remove these keywords. As a general matter, we don't want pipeline to read YAML properties file on the controller. Uh, for a lot of good reasons, uh, but still we don't want to break the weekly release. So until these changes have been finished, reviewed, merged, uh, better to keep the plugin on release CI. The risk is quite low because it's not a public facing instance. So, um, and it has been updated. So that should be okay, but let's keep an eye. So thanks survey for that. I don't have uh, other announcements. Do you have some? Nope. A word on the upcoming calendar. So next weekly uh, will be the 6th of December, 2022, next week as usual. Uh, tomorrow we have an LTS. So please don't uh, merge or try anything on the infrastructure, which could be EV or could impact the release process or CI Jenkins IO itself. We haven't heard about any security release publicly, so nothing to say. And next major event, we have FOSDEM and DevOps incoming. So if you have a Jenkins project or infrastructure uh, topic and you want to speak about that, please send the subject both uh, uh, both CFPs are open. Any questions so far? Okay, let's proceed with the work we did this week that was fully completed. Um, a lot of Jenkins recover account username. Um, Tim and Alex have found interesting things survey as well. So we'll speak about that a bit later on the new topics. It's about uh, the ECO of Account Jenkins IO, which is uh, a good ECO. That's the core problem because each time someone is locked out of their own private Jenkins instance and search on Google on how to recover Jenkins password, one of the first results is our Account Jenkins IO website, which start to be quite annoying. So most of these issues, when you start to ask question, you quickly realize that's a, yeah, that's a private uh, Jenkins URL. Yeah. The create so the plate create... is a great improvement. Uh, we yeah. can absolutely. Uh, right. uh, uh, is there is there a, <clears throat> is there a way that we can raise the the search profile no, or the can, search visibility can... of the recover account password on Jen www.jenkins.io? We can put our robot that they stay to tell uh, the many Google but to not uh, crawl <coughs> the password recovery page. Yeah, which right. That, that makes sense. link to the index. 
that that's that's even better, right? Rather than trying to raise the 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 rating of something, we will remove something else from their crawling. <clears throat> it's not Sinclair, but I think uh, canonical page on Jenkins stuck. Okay, be and nice, uh, but even if it's too late, uh, could you do something as we do in the community Jenkins um, I mean, could we get a template or boilerplate something? You know, a canned answer so that we can copy and pay the answer saying, uh, no, it's not account on Jenkins.io, do something yeah. on your own and here is the answer. Uh, in, in GitHub, you can uh, make a predefined answer in your own account. And for Helpdesk, uh, I'll see I plan to add a GitHub action to automatically Okay. Uh, respond or can add response if uh, the uh, issue contains localhost or an API address that or something like that. Yeah. Uh, maybe the forgot okay, password. But... Yeah. yeah, here it's only writing uh, the same message. The idea would be to have the same yeah. message for everyone there. Uh, I'm not sure how we could raise uh, either a bot command or something, but at least having the template written so we can copy it past would be a first step. Uh, because the bots did not coke a lot of the issues because we have some that are localhost, but some aren't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some uh, don't even answer the correctly the question. But so. All of them with, uh, with the, when there is a, the password, a forgot password, URL put in or the type of, uh, type of account issue, I've lost my password. Each of them, it would be one third or maybe half of them could be automatically closed with a predefined message. Okay, if you know how to do that, then you volunteer to take the action. <laughs> I have no idea how to do that. I don't know, I don't see where to put this response template, to be honest. Jenkins Infra run books if you want it private, Jenkins Infra documentation if you want it public, and then you copy yes. and paste. Yes. I'm, I'm not sure you seem bothered by... Oh, but... I don't think it would be used. I don't think people uh, interacting on my desk will look elsewhere to get the templates that they see for most part what to say, and they can copy paste from another issue. We are four of the person interacting with Eldesk, the two other, our team and Alex. So if it's yeah. only what is bothering you, then let me nothing, try to write the template. Yeah. But uh, yeah, sure, I, sure. Really need, I really need help. If you think that the GitHub up or whatever automation system could help, please uh, implement one. It's just, I don't know to do that. And okay. in my past experiences with that kind of system um, are 100% of the time catastrophic when I do it. So that's why I, I prefer relying on someone else that will do it better than me. Okay. Uh, I take on me uh, putting a standard message and communicating to everyone on the team uh, as short term that we have a standard message if they want, and then in parallel, we can automate the answer. Looks good to you? Yes. So let's... Add both of us here. I will update the issues open by team about the SEO. Uh, we'll see if we need another issues, but the goal is to have a centralized place about all these problems. So we list the tasks. Uh, I'm taking over that one. I won't do it now here. It's not the location. So a lot of login issue. Um, for some, uh, we for still. One. For one, yes, but we have we have one or two per week. Uh, yeah. We still have a HTTP 5.0 error on accounts, Jenkins IO. Yeah. I've captured the private GitHub uh, uh, gist of the error log. It's about a config property missing. We might need help on that one. The issue yeah. is already raised on the um, on accounts, Jenkins IO. So just keep an, um, an eye on that. Most of the time, if you have a user that had this issue, they just have to recover the password. So most of the time I go as admin, I find because the ac their account is created, it's only the answer which fails. 
So you search their account or the email and you click reset password, they should receive the email. Thing is that they never answer, so I don't know. We could check the connection, but yeah. Uh, we had an issue about slow download of Jenkins MSI, so that the second issue about someone located in India um, uh, who is in fact uh, using, uh, redirected to the China mirror and uh, the network is really slow from India to China despite the proximity. Um, we have that project since we have some digital ocean uh, credits to create a virtual machine that would act as a mirror. Um, right now, since we are operating a lot on the Azure network that takes some bandwidth for RV, I'm not sure, Stefan, uh, if you would want to try to set up the virtual machine with Terraform and set it up as a mirror. That should be Apache or Nginx server, AirSync, uh, Cron, and that should be whole. Yeah, I can try. We can also take a look at uh, the previous uh, mirror chart. So that means it. setting up a full Kubernetes cluster in Bangalore oh, yeah. no, only no, no. for yeah. one service? Maybe, yeah. maybe not, maybe not uh, uh, deploying the chart, but uh, taking a look at what was configured in it. That's a chart with a bucket that serves files and an AirSync cron jobs as a second pod that so I mean, that's literally a web server that serves the content of a directory yeah. and a cron that run every hours weekly, that's AirSync. Okay. So yes, absolutely, we can, but that's the same. Uh, the Elmchar was created by Olivier. I removed it because it wasn't used anywhere and because you need a Kubernetes cluster on the location where you want it. And most of the time, our Kubernetes cluster are not able to handle the output bandwidth. Well, when you have a virtual machine, you can put on the region where you want. That's that that, that was the initial reason, uh, and the rest is only an AirSync command. So yeah, uh, are you okay to try to work on that topic? Uh, yes, Stephen? I am. Yes, yes. Um, I'm not sure if the, let, let me add it as this to the new topic. I have to raise an issue, an issue for India Mirror. How oh, Mirror? And, um, and given the number of users in India, this thing will have a high bandwidth demand. What What yes. is DigitalOcean's bandwidth pricing? Are we going to destroy our budget hosting this? So. I we see. have a lot of bandwidth. Before I okay. on, we are using less, we're using so few of it. And oh, they okay. also ask, they also tell, uh, said to us we should try and so they can have feedback on this kind of service. Okay, great. Well, so if I remember correctly, this, this will. We this will certainly be a heavy use, right? We I mean, we, we can tell them if if it's uh, right. That's working that's fine. great. The other uh, benefit is we will be able to know what uh, this kind of service uh, consumes. Yeah, we will have a, a metric for that adult to 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 have uh, information about the metrics too. Yes, and just a note, um, we took the the bandwidth from archives Jenkins IO, which will be the fallback mirror. And it was only a few bucks per month, like 80 bucks per month at DigitalOcean. The bandwidth is really cheap. It is, it's AWS who make the bandwidth really expensive. Most of the time, the model is the following. AWS, you have like until two terabyte for free. But once you pass the threshold, you pay really, really expensive. While most of the OVH, um, digital ocean or let's say smaller cloud provider the threshold is clearly lower but the price when you go over over the threshold is cheap uh, over h is close to nothing or record as well so that should be okay and if it's too much we can always shut down the mirror or ask others but yeah Hervé uh, correctly negotiated with digital ocean so i'm sure that will be really fine thanks um, work about separated Terraform backends and repository, Azure Net and Azure. So now we have two Terraform repositories. So that's a low level 
safety issue. In the past, the reason why Terraform for Azure was uh, not kept up to date by Olivier and Tyler, it's because any contributor or any Terraform issues, and most of the time it was Terraform issues with the Azure provider, when it was breaking or destroying resources in an, let's say, unplanned way, the risk was to also destroy the whole network and DNS of the system, which is not something you want to have. <laughs> so the idea of, of Hervé that uh, dates from a few months ago was just implemented. Uh, the idea is to have two separated Terraform projects. So it has been implemented. So the Azure only reference to the network as data sources, so it's a read-only mode. And we are going to improve the security. Each account will have two technical accounts to interact with the Azure API, and each one will have its own set of permission to be sure that we cannot accidentally cross boundaries. So now um, uh, we continue, we put on the Azure Net the networks and the resources strictly related to network that shouldn't be managed on the other repository, such as in the upcoming future, the DNS zones, which mean you can create a DNS record on the other repository for an application, but the zone in itself is man should be managed there like networks. And right now, Hervé is working on a new VPN for the private network. So the virtual machine and its related resources are on Azure Net because it's strictly required to access the private network. So thanks, Hervé, for that, for that work. The job continues with other issues that are on the currently open on the milestone. Uh, GitHub permission, someone didn't read the doc, but Alex helped on this one. Thanks, Alex. Uh, Mark, I've confirmed that Windows Slave plugin is uninstalled without any issue on all controllers and still present after updating, upgrading controllers and plugins. So we don't have implicit dependencies between Windows Slave and any of the installed plugins. So that's fine. So, so but maybe I'm, I heard incorrectly. Did you say it is yet still installed? Un, uninstalled. It, uninstalled. It kept, okay, it, it thank kept you. absent from the list of plugins. Got it. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you, Damien. Um, we finally were able to open pull requests back on CI Jenkins.io for the website Stories Jenkins.io. Please note that the, the job has been moved to another location. It's now under the website directory on CI Jenkins.io. It used to be under the infra directory. The pipeline is the same for both CI Jenkins.io and Infra CI Jenkins.io, and it deploys uh, on Infra as usual. So that one is okay. We have a pull request that has been updated and is now deploying, and everything works as expected. Thanks for the help on that one, Stefan, and also Gavin. Finally, last uh, big one is the component alkai. So thanks, Hervé, for taking care of that with Gavin. So we have web components on the official NPM Jenkins projects. Am I understanding correctly, uh, Hervé? Nice yeah, achievement. Um, and uh, the next is uh, going on with uh, uh, Tim and uh, Alex and uh, Torsten and yeah, a lot okay. of discussion around uh, But as a Jenkins infra team, we were able, you, you, you did all the heavy work, but I, I mentioned the whole team. Uh, we now have an official NPM namespace for the Jenkins project, which allow developers, contributors to put NPM, um, JavaScript or any Node.js library inside that repository, which is the default entry point, like Docker Hub is for Docker images, right? So, Hervé, I have a... Oh, go ahead. No, uh, just uh, for now, uh, a token has to be set on every... Um, repository where we need to, where we are building the app with um, GitHub Action. We might have, if there are more pro uh, JavaScript projects, we might have to put in place uh, a build NPM uh, pipeline or something like that. Having okay. well, at least some credentials so people could access them, mm -hmm. use them uh, in the pipeline. Yes, so same thing as stories or other pipelines, the deployment and with the credential will happen on infra CI, but contribution could still have a CI on CI Jenkins.io. Fine, um, 
may I ask you to write down a quick run book about that? Just a few mm -hmm. notes saying we have an NPM uh, now. So, so we have a documentation for the people that will take over the infrastructure in the future. Yes. Um, okay, so run book for NPM. Just a note, so we will we won't forget about that. But thanks, that's a cool work. I hope it helps a lot. Other closed issue on your own that I could have forgot. I, I needed to go back on the on the web components. So there is a pull request open to use those web, use web components yes. on Jenkins.io. I assume it's okay if we merge that. That I I. I don't really I'm not sure I think uh, I know Kevin was uh, working on this for a long time and was waiting for uh, for the NPM repository um, we could ask him okay I will I will check or, with him yeah. but I think Great. it should it could be it could be included uh, as Vadek uh, didn't see any security issue or uh, worrying about uh, this component when we when we when Kevin included it in uh, Aquintap or uh, Wiki. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So now work in progress then. Um, so we have two top level priorities. The first one uh, is realigned repo Jenkins CI org mission. So Mark and I worked on some elements. I did some advan more advanced elements. Uh, I'm not really pleased with the experience with Chief Rog. So it's really hard to, to have something working because each time we make a change on a repository tree, it takes some time to propagate and to have an, on all the, let's say the, the instances of the service. So we have well behaviors. So sometimes, so we have to apply configuration and wait at least 24 hours that everything is working and behave as expected. So sometimes it's hard when you test things. So I'm it's I'm really slow on that topic. Tomorrow we will have a uh, meeting with Gfrog. So we don't have any other progress since last time, but we will have to see with them uh, to tell them it's really hard. So we need documentation or something because they're doc documentation does not show for these use cases. And our permission model might be an issue as well. Did you try it with a local instance? Some you don't want, maybe you do, you, you don't want trust to, me, yeah. you don't want, you okay. don't want to go that way. You, if, if you feel like you are no, curious, no, I'm, I'm good, you can, I'm good. but yeah, okay. I, I, I did, yeah. Uh, too much thing to reproduce the setup, nothing is as code. So everything is manually managed, that's nightmare. I saw a shot, but yeah, uh, it might not no. be completely configurable. Yeah. Okay, no. you know, but it's so. Uh, yeah. Honestly, trust me on that one, please. Yeah. The Elm chart they provide is is the one of the worst, was the of one of the worst I've seen. That's terrible, and you don't want to run Artifactory inside Kubernetes at all. I, I think maybe PostgreSQL or MySQL is worse to run in production with Kubernetes, but that's close, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, but the, the, the service works very well. They will have, I think it's, uh, they will have to migrate it to another uh, platform. We haven't heard from them yet. So I assume that will be in January. I'm not sure they will be able to do it in December. That could be a great moment to do it though, if they have the ability, uh, because I don't think the team in charge will have Christmas on their usual holidays. So that could be really interesting if they are available during Christmas on New Year have because not a lot of activity. So that could be a nice topic, a nice uh, time window for maintenance. Same uh, second thing, and I think we will have to rush that one. Uh, so it's just a note, no action required. I'm taking this uh, based on last year. The certificate on the GFROG Artifactory repository is going to expire. We already talked about that last week. Uh, that's something generated manually. Um, I think I will, uh, I just need to validate everything Kosuke did last year, but it looks like that the plan will be the following. 
uh, will use the our um, cert manager on, on the Azure cluster uh, to generate manually a certificate for repo jenkinsci.org. I think I will add uh, Dumi uh, ingress that should do the job. Once the certificate, the new certificate is generated with Let's Encrypt as a provider, I will have to send encrypted to people at GFrog the certificate and the key, like uh, Kosuke did last year. Uh, he encrypted that with GPG key. Uh, so then they should be able to install it and they will have to restart the instance. It's a two or three minute outage to apply the new certificate on their own. Now we only have 19 days till that certificate expires. So yep. that one's becoming becoming much more, much more urgent. Yep. Um, so that's why I will have to generate it. Uh, why using cert manager? It's because we don't own the web server behind repojenkinsia.org. So we need a proof to, to the certificate uh, author. And we have access to the Jenkins CI org DNS. Everything is set on cert manager, so we can generate it using DNS uh, challenge on Let's Encrypt. That should be quite easy, and we won't have to bother or rely on Kosuke for this one. Next topic uh, that's work in progress recreate networks on Azure, first the private and then the publics, uh, to fix two main issues. The current public networks uh, does uh, as overlap issue with the IP, and we want to support IPv6 at least for external users. So there is a work in progress on that area. As we said, now we have a fully man code managed uh, with the the work of Hervé. Uh, Hervé was able to recreate from scratch a new set of network of private network that could be turned to dual stack ipv4 and ipv6 or not we can change them without recreating them with the new networks and new set of ip so it's created from scratch so we will be able to do a b migration and the plan should be the same for the public networks as well regarding ipv6 uh, it's still complicated to find a fine solution uh, because as soon as we go on Kubernetes, it's we we are going to test that, but it's hard to have internally only IPv4 and externally IPv6. It's hard to find an appliance or resource that should be able to do the gateway, the gateway between both. The thing is that if we say we need to have a full IPv6 uh, routing, Kubernetes supports that, AKS as well. But in that case, we need to change the network mode used inside Kubernetes clusters. And that new network mode has two downsides for us. First one, it doesn't support Windows worker, worker nodes. That should not be an issue because we don't need IPv6 for the private clusters where we have Windows node pool in the future. But the second thing is that it exposes some endpoint of the uh, Kubernetes agent named Kubelet. Uh, it exposes some endpoints of the worker nodes, and we don't we don't really want that. So right now, uh, we haven't pushed further. What uh, Erve proposed, uh, and we are going to try this. The private part is not IPv6 compliant because we don't need it. It's building the VPN, uh, private VPN. And once we will have the new private cluster, we will try to have a public uh, load balancer with IPv6 and IPv4 on a network or a subnet, which is dual stack, and see if we can only route IPv4 then. That's the current status. We need to dig, dig a bit more the Azure documentation on that part, but they are missing a lot of documentation, to be quite honest. So work in progress. Right now, the status is Hervé is working on the VPN uh, virtual machine. Two layers, one infrastructure as code and then Puppet updates. So we should be able in the future to have two VPNs, one for the private network, infra CI access, release CI access, and infrastructure uh, tooling access. And the VPN for public will allow us to let access to the public Kubernetes cluster for people like Adrien, for instance. So they could they could have a user re restricted to a Kubernetes namespace where they could see their application logs and have access to a read status. So they can check the 
the health of the application without any risk for the cluster itself. We might think uh, also idea from Hervé, we might think about a trusted network zone in the future. So some elements should be run only from that trusted network. The goal is to split access and limit the blast reduce if an unwanted access happen on one of the VPN. Another nice side effect, if we have a bunch of tiny, uh, tiny virtual machines, the cost will decrease greatly because right now the VPN machine is really huge. For, uh, for numerous reasons, and we cannot change that. So since we cannot shrink it, better to have a set of minors that the additional cost will be clearly behind. Next step, publish pipeline step doc generator and backend extension. So last, uh, last step of this issue, is to have CI and Jenkins IO able to build the same pipeline as Infra CI for both projects. One of the projects has been done so this morning. So thanks, Stefan, for that uh, work. And I think the other is almost done. Yeah, uh, I think, I think the, the ball is on your side. Uh, yes. So that one is considered almost closed. And it was a nice exercise for Stefan to merge pipeline and play around uh, with our configuration. One note, uh, Stefan was able to start improving the labels that we provide for developer on CI Jenkins IO to step-by-step -step going to labels that makes more sense, such as Linux dash IMD64, because Linux only doesn't make sense. Linux is a platform and as a label, it's complicated given we provide different CPU, different kind of Linux instances, containers or uh, everything. Um, so, in that part, we are going more and more on having sp highly specialized labels that most of the time are abstracted away by the pipeline library or the pipeline labels. So, so if I, but if I mean that Linux could be any Linux that's available, how do would I continue to say that? Would I continue to use that label? Why would you want to have such label? because I like that there's intentional variation running the Git client tests on ARM or on AMD64 or System390, wherever. Uh, I like that it sometimes finds failures for me. So, but I, I also understand if that's not the way we want to go. It just, for me, there is some benefit as a maintainer that when I say Linux, I really mean any platform variant of Linux. Ah, so in that case, you pick you... A random in a array in your pipeline. You put all the architecture and pick yes. one randomly when you build your oh, or, or build your on it. Yes, or build yes, on I... it will be quite can be costly, but that's yeah. why I mentioned randomly pick one. Which which is exactly what I'm getting, and I I actually have that in my in my personal setup where I intentionally allow Linux means either CentOS or CentOS seven or Ubuntu twenty two or et cetera, and and that variation actually helps me, but that may not help others. And I understand if it doesn't help others. Oh. I happen to have a platform specific plugin that I like getting variation as I go, but it sounds like the, the, the plan is not to have that kind of variation uh, automatically. And most people probably don't think of it and would be surprised if they got it. So, so I, I, yep. I support that, the choice. Uh, the, the use case is interesting because as Hervé said, we could provide a new attributes to the build plugins or equivalents. Um, but being able to say, I want to either randomly select a CPU architecture or a Linux flavor. Uh, a Linux flavor is, is not an option here because we don't provide something else than Ubuntu. Right. We could in the future though, but that's clearly no. not right now. But right. we have different CPU. So that could be a feature of the vibrant libraries functions that say, okay, explicitly as a maintainer, I want to either build an old CPU flavors for this platform or select randomly uh, and change so you can introduce chaos on your builds. But that thing must be first explicit and second, not default because that will bite a lot of users 
Remember the ARM unplanned builds? That were nice for the cost of the infrastructure, but that weren't nice for the debug surprise for the plugin maintainers. And that's the main issue is that we don't want labels that are not deterministic. Okay. So there are some parts that we cannot remove. Like uh, when we say a Linux AMD64 with Docker, still we can schedule that on a pod or a virtual machine on EC2 or Azure VM. That's up to us. That's already a, a surprise, surprising change that can happen. So let's try to not add more. But we are not removing Linux label yet. Uh, Stefan did the work, that's the other, other issue, uh, Windows agent disconnect prematurely. The work is going on on Windows that has less usages. Linux should be the next. But right now we are adding slowly, but gradually new labels that have a more specific meaning. And then they, are, they can be added to the pipeline library on background. But if, if we look that from the big picture, I, I really think that to, to provide the best uh, um, working area for your plugin, you should build on any, uh, uh, on all of them and mm. have a failure on, on the one, on any one which failed. Because if you really want to be able to have your plugin working on any kind of Linux, you should try each time with any kind of Linux. But it would, uh... Make it would the code small model. Close because we would uh, need to build uh, four, yeah, but five, if, and then X time more. X, if you think of is plugin and and uh, with the random uh, uh, solution, I think, that means that I think one every eight or ten times it will find a, a bug that is probably coming from like eight eight times before. It, it did the uh, change, so it's it's very hard to debug everything. I think the more complex plugin have already multiple architecture in their pipeline. They don't that, use just that, a build that's plugin. That's why. That's why I I really think yep. it's, that it's, would it's be cost effective. Nice. I agree. I agree. It's cost effective, but the it's the, cost the best. Nothing. The, the I, cost I is really... nothing. Uh, the order of magnitude will be when you will, will cross 10 axes for the matrix, we can think about cost. That's one order of magnitude compared to the time wasted by the plugin maintainers trying to understand why the plugin is I not agree. working at a contribu uh, from one user that say, hey, I have the Git plugin on my machine. And then you have to gather information to understand yeah. that it's related to a CPU or architecture specific things. And worse, that we, time we should discussing. provide other other kind of uh, CentOS and everything that that that's worth. We should be able to provide more more um, uh, specific. Uh, eventually, check. for Windows, that might be an issue. However, here first we have the CPU Z machine, which is one machine. So we don't pay more for doing more builds on that machine. It's a permanent agent. So yeah. that's the first exotic one. The IRAM builds uh, are 20 to 30% cheaper than the AMD builds. And that's a test issue though. Uh, they, I'm not sure about how it's start detected, but right now, if you build once the Java, the Java binary, you uh, archive it and then you have a set of smoke tests that say, I. I have smaller and shorter tests for each platform. Uh, you have one way more efficient than not building or randomly building. And the other, uh, the other, let's say, common thing that all of the major open source project does, we say we support this platform. We need to smoke test on this platform, absolutely. Otherwise, it's not support. It's random guess at best. Yeah, and, and random is really killing your fit. I mean, wow. We are missing a lot of tests here because we don't want to run a full test suite on that area. You want to run a smoke yeah. test on eventually specific issues. So, I mean, uh, for us as infrastructure, we provide the platform. So we don't have to say build more or build less. We say, okay, we have, right now we have uh, still some margin. So better to provide that. I don't say it, uh, it's urgent, but that's the direction. Right now, the issues I mentioned um, it's just we added more labels, more specific labels. We didn't remove or change any way of using labels, right? Just to to make everyone feel safe. We didn't break anything, right? Right. Not yet. No, but, and 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 I th I think you're 
you're, I, I fully support the determinism. The deterministic is much better for the consumers, right? This, this randomization use case is, is quite exotic. Uh, even given Stefan's comments, it is quite exotic. And it would be perfectly fine for us to tell people like Mark Waite who have platform specific things, your plugin will have to find additional ways to test. The standard ways to do things are going to be deterministic. Yeah, but the feature of a random selection, as Hervé said, if you have, if you provide a, an attribute, let's say random, random test or random builds, and you provide yourself a list of labels, if we provide these labels, that could be that that should fulfill the same. There is a need, and we can provide that need. That's what I want to say. Yes. So that yeah, Windows agents on CI disconnect prematurely. So that one is removing Windows because that one is not used almost except by the acceptance test, which is the last mile for you, Stefan. Yeah. You have to update the acceptance test the job. Um, toward uh, cleanup of resources. So there are two resource groups that cost us money. So first, prod confluence. Uh, so Hervé, you confirmed that you removed one of the two databases, right? Yes, I finished the backup of the other yesterday. Cool. I have to remove it, and I was wondering also, there, is, uh, there are two Docker images on this machine, which uh, wait. That, uh, that's another topic. Yeah, OK. Uh, I, I have to put this backup uh, somewhere. Uh, Okay. Uh, when compressed, they weight about uh, five hundred uh, megabytes. We okay. I can open a GitHub repo and put it there. Uh, a private repo, or I don't know, or, uh, or object storage in Azure, as we want. Yeah, uh, uh, isn't object storage the thing you you wanted to use last time we discussed that? Yeah. Because of the size. Uh... Okay. Um, then that, that will be interesting then to set up uh, a resource group with a bucket uh, named uh, infrastructure uh, archive. And what archive, we put huh? here must be yeah. the GPG uh, uh, encrypted. Looks good to you? Yes. Uh, that should be 300 bucks per month. Almost three six uh, three thousand sixty bucks per year saved thanks to that work. So thanks, survey for that. Um, same for prod community function. I'm late on that topic. I have to ask on the developer mailing lists if anyone is aware of any functions as your functions still being used. Some are evergreen, directly related, and can be re removed and deleted from Azure, but some other are like infra function and we weren't sure if they were used. So let's send an email before deleting. The cost there is 100 per month, so it's it's uh, not a lot. Um, so continue working on that, but these two uh, should uh, help. Uh, just a quick one that I've opened, the two last one. Uh, that's an old one that a dog was spamming uh, on third CI that was cooked by Daniel. And I have the issue uh, yesterday on a personal machine with that a dog agent. It was sending a lot of un unable to get this metrics logs on syslog by data dog agents more specifically these were always related to var lib docker overlay so one of the layers of one of the containers or multiple and some on the var uh, docker net ns these two are two specific file system that can be blacklisted from what the data dog agent change it used to work differently with the version 6 of the data dog agent or 5 but since the version, the latest that we have, since a few version, uh, it generates a lot of error clearly. So since at least, yeah, uh, I think it's it's clearly uh, older than that. I'm not sure that initial message was related to Docker, but still now no more message with the fix I provided. So it's currently waiting for a review for someone and should, for deployment. I took the opportunity to to take that issue down. Anyone interested on pairing and merging in that pair so we can share knowledge is welcome to mention themselves. 
And the last one, Java 19, Stefan? What is last but not least, um, I did two on three. It's uh, it's looking good. I'm uh, I started the third one this morning, and right now I'm stuck because the inbound agent on Jenkins is not prepared as uh, with GDK 19. So I yep. I might have to work on a repository somewhere with yep. uh, Jenkins CI. You no, know? no. Ah, you, you see, I thought that you have planned you need... your my step already, but no. If you look at the Java 17 Windows agent, it's built on top of the GDK 11 because yeah. the inbound agent uh, GDK you the... want is the one from that uh, that will connect and start the agent process. So you need the same GDK than the controller for the GDK process, which uh, is GDK, it's, GDK it's what I did. It's what I did. I'm missing something somewhere, but. Uh, Okay. Um, I, I, I use the same model, the, so I the, probably then made it's something. a typo. That model will work. Okay. Uh, so that means in the upcoming milestone, once uh, these uh, let's say minor annoyance will be fixed, uh, Stefan, you should be able to announce on the developer mailing list that anyone who want to try early builds of their Jenkins project with GDK 19 will be able to do it. I will have to provide an agent first because right now I'm doing the the image, but yep. there is no no agent yet. Yep. But you have added the tool GDK19 right yes, now. Yes, I did. <laughs> so that should be almost there. <laughs> so uh, nice work, almost there. One last element that I have raised: we had an issue uh, the, uh, about. Uh, Jira LDAP Thinker, which is a project that we have on the infra, we generate a lot of security issues uh, as per Dependabot. It's, I'm not sure most of them are public. The name looks pretty obvious, Jira LDAP Thinker, but in fact, I have no idea where is it running, what it does, and what it's called, and if it's still used. Mark, do you have any memory of that project? Sorry, but no, I do not. Oh, actually, I take it back. I think I do have a rather dark memory of it. It is that when we hosted our own L our own Jira server, we had to do something with this. But once we switched to Linux Foundation hosting, this thing became unnecessary. Oh, nice. Okay. I think so anyway. At least I I thought that there was something that allowed us or we did with our own when we were hosting our own jira server but the hosting of our own jira server was a very dark period for us right because we like it much better that the linux foundation does that um so i propose that we do two things first we consult the second memory person after mark with daniel beck and we search for the artifact group ID to see if we have something depending on that and running it somewhere on the infrastructure. If it's okay, if if Daniel con uh, confirm what just Mark said, and if we don't find any dependency uh, with the group ID artifact ID on Java other Java projects, then I propose that we simply archive the repository. We can always unarchive and make it mm -hmm. change somewhere, but. Yeah, that will at least uh, silence the security issue. And since the code hasn't been changed since two, almost three years, I will say I'm not sure that project is uh, used anymore. Well, I, just for reference, the, the group ID and artifact ID you were highlighting wasn't quite the one you want to check for. You want to check for not the parent, but the... Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry for that. Yeah, right, this one. Want, and it's a pretty unique, it's a relatively unique name, Jira REST LDAP Sinker. Uh, artifact ID references. I yes. think the Jira checker repository is the same kind of uh, no different uh, service. It was uh, as a function to check hosting requests for Jenkins plugin. Last commit from April uh, 2017. Sorry, uh, I, I am lost. Um, uh, the Jira checker, if you replace in the URL, Jira uh, dash checker. 
just noticed it uh, while searching for Jira repository. Ah, okay, yep. We, okay, so we have uh, two yeah. projects that should be archivable eventually. Uh, and as your function for checking hosting request, I mean, we are in an area that sounds like we could delete stuff. <laughs> Good catch, thanks. Okay, I think that's all. We will have to open issues for the three new topics. Do you have other topics that we should look at for next week? So you had mentioned the the expiration of one of the certificates. There are two other certificates that are pending expiration. Jenkins-ci.org expires in 38 days and Jenkins.io expires in 58 days. But I believe both those will be auto renewed. And if if we get under 28 days and they haven't been renewed, I'll go talking to Tyler Croy because his he he has the one, he's the one who processes the automated renewal. Certificate or domain names? Uh, oh, sorry. Is there a difference? You're right. Domain names. Yep. Sorry. Thank okay. you. Not certificate. Domain names. You're correct. Yep. It is the you domain names. Okay. So you you mentioned this last week, I think. I will just double check if we have an alert for that then. Yeah. Yeah. So you're right. And, and correct. It is not the certificates. It's the domain names. Okay. Cool. But a nice reminder. Okay. Is there something else to add? Okay. So I'm going to stop recording. So by everyone who is watching that recording and see you next week.